All right, guys, welcome back to the 44 Day Challenge. I'm Scott Duke inside the Wellstand Studio, and today is day 24 as we push forward. The book we're reviewing today is called Cashing In getting the most when you sell your business. There's three authors that have put this together, Lisa Berger, Donaldson Berger, and William Eastwood. So what are we going to pull out of this today? Number one knowledge nugget is, what is your buyer looking for? And each author, when we read the books, they usually cover what a buyer is looking for. And over the course of this 44 day challenge, I have been reiterating how important it is to get inside the buyer's head, inside the buyer's shoes, because they're the ones that are going to be purchasing your company at the end of the day. They're, they are our customer, and just like the business you're running now, you need to be customer-centric, thinking about your customer. Now your business is the product you are selling, so you need to think about what your customer is gonna be looking for. And each of these books seems to have a different, a different list of items that customers are looking for, so we can culminate them all together, know exactly how we wanna present our business when we take it to market. So this is what Lisa says. A customer is looking for, your buyer, increasing stock value or equity of the acquiring company. They want to secure new sources of supplies or raw materials. They want to diversify into new lines of business or products, move into new geographical areas, benefit, benefit from economies of scale and production, distribution and marketing, reduce the competition, increase market share, create an imp uh, impression of expansion, reduce tax liabilities, acquire your talent, acquire unique manufacturing processes or patents, and invest earnings from an existing business to generate income. So these are the reasons why a potential acquirer would be looking to buy your company. Obviously, they're not gonna be looking for all of these, but they're definitely gonna be looking for one. For instance, maybe they're just looking to buy you to reduce competition. Maybe they're looking to expand into a geographical area. So depending on the person you're targeting to acquire you, you wanna, you wanna focus on, the, on one of these or more of these as items in your memorandum. Okay, so that is number one knowledge nugget. Knowledge nugget number two is on a stagnating sale and what to do about it. So this is in the case that you put your business up for sale. It's on biz buy sell, it's on businessforsale.com. You have a, maybe you have a broker that's getting the message out there and you don't get any replies or maybe you get some replies, but they aren't quality buyers. And that business of yours just sits there kind of stagnating for sale for six months, eight months. What do you do? And it is the author's suggestion, it is Lisa's suggestion, that you pull that business off the market. Because what you don't want is your business just to be sitting there forever and people will eventually find out it's for sale, you'll lose confidentiality, you'll, you'll lose trust with your employees and your, your customers. And people will think, what the heck's wrong with this business that it hasn't sold for so long? So what you need to do is pull it off the market, sit on it, figure out what it what the reasons are why it isn't selling. Maybe it's that the price is too high. Maybe it's that you don't have enough processes in place. Look through these videos, look at all the things that you can do to improve your business and then do those things. And in six months, put it back on the market and get a fresh start. You do not want to leave your business stagnating for sale forever because it will deter future buyers. We're going to skip forward and do our third knowledge nugget at the end of today's educational. And so we'll move forward into the quotes that we pulled out of this book. And the first quote is on thinking about your clients, which is kind of the theme of the day on page 81 here. So this quote says, and this is from a buyer that sold his business and they take throughout this book, they actually have quotes from people that have successfully sold. Is it, I sold kind of the tail end of my business. I basically gave it away for just 10% of what it would have taken in over the next year just to make sure my clients would be taken care of. To me, that's better than closing the doors. That does, that does so much damage to the image of a small business, one day just disappearing. And I chose this quote because it really is important to understand that you wanna sell your business so that you can pull the equity out so you're comfortable for retirement, you can pull the equity out so you can invest it into future endeavors. But there's other people that are attached to your business, and it's your employees and your clients. And selling your business is important to them as well. You don't wanna just drop the bag and leave your clients empty handed, shut the doors and tell your employees they need to leave. Much better, even if you sell the business for a fraction of what it may be worth, 
if you're choosing between selling it for a little bit and not selling it at all, it's always better to sell it for a little bit for yourself and for your employees and customers. So that's why I chose this quote. Our next quote is on negotiation. So you've gotten to the point where you've marketed your business, a potential buyers express interest, maybe you've gotten a letter of intent, and now you're getting down to the nitty gritty where negotiation starts. And this is the first, the quote that we pulled out of this book gives you some idea of where you wanna start that negotiation. It says, leave the relatively minor elements of a sale, although they may be the most emotionally charged, to last. Nego great negotiators, instead of jumping on such questions as the duration of a non-compete or whether the seller gets a new title of chief executive officer or chief operating officer, si sidle up the major points first. You want to hammer out those major points. If you can't get the major points agreed upon, there's no point in moving forward to the minor points. And what I've found in my experience is once you get the major points handled, it relieves so much stress in negotiation that those minor points flow a lot more smoothly. So what this author says, don't get hung up on the minors, deal with the majors first in the, in the start of your negotiation. Our major takeaway from day 24's book is cash is not the only way to get paid. And we're gonna head over to the whiteboard as these authors demonstrate and show all the ways that you can get paid in a deal, very valuable information. All right, from cashing in, ways to get paid. Probably a very important thing to know because at the end of the day, this is what we are all shooting for when we go to sell our business. So you can sell your business for all cash in that the whole deal is cash. You get a big check at the end of it, you walk away and you have complete freedom because you're no longer attached to the business. So this of course is best for freedom. It's worse for tax because you're getting all the cash in one year and you're gonna have the, wor the, the highest tax burden. And it uh, may reduce the price because when people are paying cash, all cash, it's a negotiation tactic. They can bring the price down. Then there's notes. So you could give the, you could essentially loan the buyer money at the time of sale. And what they're saying is we will pay you at a later date and we will pay interest on this money. And you usually see this over a three to five year period. The thing about notes is of course they're higher risk because of the business defaults, then you aren't going to get paid. You may even get the business back and that's not something that you want. Uh, there are tax benefits because again, that purchase price is now being deferred over multiple years. And then you might get and likely will get above market interest rates. And this is the interesting thing because if you get an all cash deal, what are you gonna do with your cash anyway? You're gonna take it, you're gonna invest it into some other vehicle. And you may get a, lo a low percentage rate if you're just getting a GIC or a government bond or something of that sort. Where if you're loaning the buyer money, then you can choose the interest rate. So you can put a higher interest rate and technically make more this way than if you had all cash and put the, the cash somewhere else. Okay, the next is stock. So this is only gonna be available obviously for public, if you, a public company is purchasing you. And think of it as an investment decision. So when they offer this to you, if you're in this situation, instead of taking the cash and putting it into a company, other companies into the stock market, diversifying it, you're now investing it completely into this company that's acquiring you. So just be cautious, obviously, but it's, it can't, it's not a bad route if you have the option and it's a public company buying you and you trust that this company is on an upward trend. Lastly, there's an earnout. Most controversial for sure, uh, but earnouts usually come about because there, there's a, a differential in what the buyer thinks the company is worth and what the seller thinks the company is worth and what it's going to do in the future. Other videos I've talked about earnouts, so you can track back to the 44 days and get a bit more information on earnout. But these are the reasons why it's good and bad. So you're paid for performance. So you're going to have to make sure it's likely you're going to be staying on in your company and you're going to have to make sure it hits target so you get you get that extra payment. Usually it's 20 to 60% of the sale price. 60 is obviously high, 20 is more reasonable, and it's gonna be over two to five years. It's higher risk because you don't know what's gonna happen in the future, uh, but there are tax benefits to it. And this is a way, earn out, the same as notes, are usually a way to get to that higher price uh, through negotiation. So this is, these are the ways, and pretty much a combination of all of these are the only ways that you're gonna get paid out on your business. So it's good to know about them because these are the options. All right, that was day 24 of the 44 day challenge. We keep charging along. Thanks again to the authors that wrote Cashing In, great information that came out of it. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks.